Hey there, this is Johnny Rowlett. I wanted to do something different this week with our YouTube channel. I wanted to focus on what I believe is a lost art. That's the art of the American Cowboy. Most people think the American Cowboy is dead and gone or something that you see in the movies. I'm so grateful to say that's completely incorrect. I want to introduce you to one of my great friends, Mr. Tim Olay. Tim is a throwback cowboy. He still kind of does it the old fashioned way and he kind of enjoys that. He enjoys going and gathering cows, using horseback still. He enjoys implementing the lessons he's learned from his father and his father-in-law and his past family and lessons learned. But more than anything, I think what I really want you to get to know Tim for is he's a really good guy and an amazing man of God, an amazing family man and cowboy, Tim Molay. When they're when cattle are all bunched up, and like if I come here and they're all standing here at the well, I'd be pretty nervous. I think well, there's there's no water, there's okay. something wrong. But when they're scattered, I mean they got some over here, there's some over here. It takes forever to look at them all, but when you go look at them, they're they're healthy and fine. They're just relaxed. They're at peace. Right. And that's right. what you look you're looking for when you come out to look. Or there could be a coyote or a mountain lion out here, and then they're all bunched up. There's, uh, like I said, they're, they're all in a bunch. Other than here in a couple of hours, hopefully, they'll all come to water and drink, but they usually come in, drink, and then go right back out to graze. And, huh. So, just certain things you look for, like, oh, there's something wrong with this picture. But uh, the ideal picture is what we're seeing. They're just scattered everywhere. And you don't get to see very many of them because they're just, it's not that hot. If it was 100 degrees right now, then it'd probably be bunched up just because of the heat. Yeah. And there's really nothing you can do about that because it's too hot. Right. But, but you realize you're, you're not gaining weight that day. Oh, wow. So if you have like uh, 30 days of really hot weather, your calves, you can just tell by this fall, your calves are gonna be lighter because they're just, they were just too bunched up and they weren't grazing. But these these calves are just grazing most of the day. Wow. So they're gaining weight every day. And that's what that's your goal is to have them at peace and gain weight. Make sure there's no coyotes or wolves or bears that are disturbing them. Like if I went up and they're, and they're all bunched up in a corner, then yeah. I know that's probably a wildlife that's a bear, a lion, or something that's got them spooked and they're all huddled up. And, well, they're just the fret, not that they're eating, that, that you lose weight that way, but just being in fear and fret. Stress. Yeah. Stress, and that's the worst killer for your weight loss. Plenty of water. I want to get a good shot of your brand on that cow. It's a V. I once was lost in an open A, and now I'm found. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> this red heifer here, I might not sell her. She'd be a good one to keep for a cow. Thinking about doing that with about 10 of them. Even if I didn't keep them, if I just raise this. The Red Angus breed has really taken off. It's pretty popular if you've got heifers. Yeah, about now, for the next hour and a half, there'll be cattle coming into water. Oh, 
this was a really cool little battle of the bulls that we just got blessed enough to kind of capture here and what's going on is this black bull is protecting its herd and this red bull's coming in off the hills and as his cows are going over to drink that red bull is coming to checking out that black bull's herd and for just a second i thought it was going to be a major battle but for some reason that black bull just let him on in there to sniff around not to walk very far to get grass and water. Yeah. It's kind of a drier, arid, more. As soon as you cross the hill, it's a different kind of country. It's just more. But I like this grass. It's, a, it's short, but it's stout. Oh, yeah. It's real stout, high in protein grass. See, there's some of the land is tribal owned, and you have to lease it from the tribe. And, uh, and then way back in the when they established the Crow Indian Reservation, they allotted families pieces of ground throughout, and, and it's their ground. It's the individual uh, Crow Indians' ground. And they have the option of uh, running it themselves or leasing it to somebody to run cattle. That's what my wife does. She negotiates the lease uh, bids. And it's different. Every, every reservation runs things a little differently. Uh, and the Crow Indian Reservation is probably more different than most. You know, sometimes when you picture parts of Montana, you get this either the mountainous, beautiful side, or you picture this really flat, arid, dusty kind of cow side. But what I love about this part is you can see that it's uh, even the dusty, dirty, flat part. It's got some beautiful areas where even Tim was able to pick some berries for us to try. Hint, they are not all that great. The road dirt on them. <laughs> Just, they got a seed, a big old seed in the middle of them. Oh, is it? Tim has two amazing adult daughters that are both married to amazing cowboys and they live out there on the ranch and uh, so Tim stopped in town here and filled up the water to be able to bless his daughter and put some water in their well. I thought that was pretty cool. This colt behind me right here was born this morning. Brand new baby colt from this beautiful paint mare.
One of my favorite things about Tim is something that you would never expect from a cowboy, and that's his ability to communicate. Not only does he communicate as a pastor of a local church outside of Hardin, Montana, he also teaches kids and, well, really people of all ages how to rope, including myself. Got a few good lessons from him. Sit back and enjoy this montage of him teaching this young lady how to rope. Pretty cool. Leaning just kills all your power and it won't get there. You think you're helping him, but it just here you got all your power. It's like a, a ball player doesn't throw a ball like this. He's up here like this where he can throw. It's the same thing. You just got more power. Just keep it this square. If you feel yourself leaning, just if you need to go closer to the calf, kick him up there. Okay. But as soon as you do this, it just takes it and it just doesn't get there. Here it's hard to push. Yeah. Back here you got just it's like a ball. You get a more it's more accurate. Same thing. If he goes, you go. He will. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go. That a girl. That's right, yeah. Oh. Ranch and just got through watching Tim Molay do a clinic for a young lady on uh, calf roping and it was just so interesting and he's so patient and kind and gentle with them and uh, so we just kind of now we'll take these calves back to the kind of turn them out and then uh, watch the sun go down. In finishing this video, I've got to give a tip of the hat to this young boy right here, Lewis Deb. He is the son of Bethany and Guy, which is Guy is a professional bull rider, and that is Tim and Colleen's grandson, their first grandson, and uh, and he obviously likes to imitate his daddy riding the bulls. You see, he gets bucked off there and runs back into the chute for protection, just like his daddy. <laughs> so how many grandkids you got now three three you know all their names uh, sometimes <laughs> <laughs> so you got jackson lewis deb, lewis deb and holland 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 called her holly holly 
You never had any male children, so this is yeah, it's got, got boys. Got boys. Bethany and Guy have Hall, Holland, Holly, and Lewis, and their third child is going to be Yah. Hallelujah. Oh, is that right? <laughs> Shut up. Better name than my brother, Guaca, Guacamole. <laughs> Lewis Deb was named after Deb Copenhaver who just recently passed Coach, away no, and is a Hall of Fame Bronc rider for the PRCA. So just a little honor from the Mole family and the Rowlett family. Just wanted to say thank you for watching this video and uh, thank you to Tim and Colleen and all the Moles for allowing us into your lives. We love you.